What's going on guys? Thanks so much for stopping by and checking out the channel today. So like I said in the last video, today we're going to start looking at the transfer case in Dad's Jeep. It's been stuck in four highs since the winter and my dad removed the front drive shaft to prevent any damage from driving the vehicle on the road in the front end, but we're not going to be able to leave it like that. We're going to need four wheel drive in this vehicle eventually. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the transfer case today. Now I did already go ahead and get a junkyard transfer case and drive shaft for it. The transfer cases have different yokes on the rear. So the old transfer case has got a fixed yoke and the new transfer case has got a slip yoke. That necessitates the drive shaft to be switched, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. In my opinion, there's probably mechanical damage going on with the transfer case right now that's preventing it from shifting. We're gonna get under there and check the linkage to make sure, but I'm pretty sure all that's been addressed by my dad and my brothers. So, out with the old transfer case and with the new. So the first thing we're gonna do is go out here and do a better inspection on this Jeep, check out the transfer case, and make sure that we actually need to replace the transfer case before we get into something that we don't need to do. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, can you see me? Okay, <laughs> sorry. Got to bend down a little bit here. So this is what I'm talking about. Transfer case right here. Doesn't matter what gear you have it in, it's just stuck. It won't move left, it won't move right. Just permanently stuck in four high with the front end engaged. Now, if you don't know, um, when you have a Jeep and it has four wheel drive, you're not really supposed to use that on dry pavement at highway speeds. You can actually cause some pretty significant damage to the front end of the vehicle. So you need to have that disengaged. Once again, front drive shaft is removed, so hopefully no major lingering damage to the front end, but transfer case, something's gotta be done. This won't budge. All right guys, so that leaves us right here. Now the last thing that we gotta check before we condemn this transfer case is the linkage. So we're gonna go ahead, get on the creeper, get underneath the Jeep, check everything out, take a good look at the linkage, and seeing if there's anything that, that, that's out of the way or in a bind or anything like that that signals that it may be a problem other than the transfer case. But I'm pretty sure we're gonna not be so lucky. So let's check it out. All right, well, that pretty much confirms it. The uh, linkage is in good shape. All the bushings are there, nothing's bound up. There's nothing going on like that. So it's definitely gonna be a transfer case problem. Uh, let's go ahead and go back here and check out the parts that I got from the junkyard. I'm about to give them a good scrub with our old friend Purple Power and uh, get ready to start pulling this stuff out. So let's go check it out. All right, guys, so the parts that I got for the XJ from the junkyard, transfer case, front drive shaft, rear drive shaft. I got the cross member for another XJ and I got the motor mount in the bracket just because that stuff all came off and it was all in a pile anyway. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and spray the stuff down with purple power that you see right there, get everything nice and pressure washed up and kind of take a look and see where we're at from there. Okay, let's get to it. <laughs>
Okay guys, so we have a far more impressive looking pile of parts now that they are clean. That cross member is in great shape and is going to do very good for the other XJ I'm building. Um, that uh, bracket right there, uh, just in case I need an extra one in the future. Got both drive shafts here cleaned up. Now I'm going to order U-joints for the drive shafts, of course, to rebuild them before I throw them in and we will give them a coat of paint. But honestly, looking at this drive shaft here, I might have struck a little bit of junkyard gold and got one that was recently rebuilt. Um, if you look at this, this piece of electro welded steel is still relative, relatively uh, in the condition that it would have left a mill in. Um, so the, the surface rust is very minimal and there isn't any rust set in on the actual yokes or the uh, welds yet so look at looking at this one they're definitely not the same age so i might have got lucky and gotten a rebuilt one uh, regardless we're going to go ahead and replace the u-joints on the ends and get them ready to go moving over and looking at the transfer case we are definitely going to replace the ring inside for the speedo so we will be set up for the tires that we're going to be running um, we're going to replace replace the sec selector switch over here the four-wheel drive range switch um, we're going to have to pull that vent line off there and get a new vent line for it. Just small things to get it ready, but uh, we're not going to tear anything apart in the Jeep and disable it yet. Um, we are going to leave the Jeep to the point where we can drive it if we need to do anything like that. I don't want to disable it and leave it, you know, disabled in the driveway. So we will come back at a later time and start pulling this stuff out. The next video on this vehicle will definitely be rebuilding the drive shafts and doing some stuff to the transfer case and getting them ready to go in i will probably end up doing something a little bit different in the next video i don't know if i'm going to continue with this um, there's a couple other things that need a little bit of attention a little bit of repair and some stuff i need to catch you guys up on so we will go ahead and uh, get all this stuff cleaned up for the day and we'll see you in the next one